It's David Arquette. This is a message from me, David Arquette, saying thank you. Thank you so much for being a fan of the Scream movies, Eight-Legged Freaks, Ready to Rumble. I also heard you have a, a podcast called Don't Go Out There. I wish you all the best with that. Um, and uh, I just want to say thanks for being a fan and, and keep watching movies. Keep doing things you love. You're the greatest. Don't let anyone tell you different. In a world where zombies, ghosts, serial killers, and vampires all exist, it's Nico, Brian, Mike, and Dustin, and they are all that stand between you and the films that could end the world. Welcome to the Don't Go Out There Horror Movie Welcome back, Podcast. everybody, to the Don't Go Out There Horror Movie Podcast. Just want to thank all of our fans and listeners. We really appreciate all support. You guys are awesome. Before we get into tonight's film, I just want to give a quick shout out to our website, don'tgooutthere.com. My man Brian has done a fantastic job with the website. He's got it looking great. Everything about our podcast is on there. All of our episodes and interviews from episode one to our weekly release. If you want to check out all of our episodes there, maybe you have an office job, don't have access to your phone, you can listen on your desktop computer. We've done some incredible interviews in the past with some of the biggest names in horror, uh, some of your favorite slashers, uh, writers, directors. Check out our interviews if you haven't heard those yet. We got our store. We got some new T-shirts. Uh, Brian and Dustin have done some fantastic designs if you want to check those out. And we also have Shan's Etsy page attached as well if you want to grab a Tumblr. And we also have our social media, fa uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Uh, we love interacting with our fans. We love you know meeting new people. We love answering your comments and questions on the air. So definitely check us out on social media. And the last thing I want to shout out is our patreon we call it blood donors we have the traditional monthly reoccurring kind you're a big fan of our podcast a big fan of our show you want to help support us that option is available and we also have one-time donations if you want to donate and you know have a, if you have a film review you want us to do that option is available as well all right guys let's jump into the film review uh this has been my theme month subgenre month i think it's been really fun uh i had a good time assigning my co-host the subgenre i know they're a big fan of and we're going to conclude that month tonight with Brother Dustin's pick. I gave him creature feature monster movie just because I know he's kind of a fan of that that genre. And uh, yeah. this one was a, a popular one in his uh, fan his fan choice month. Dustin, announce your pick. So as much as I love a good creature feature, I also really enjoy horror comedies. I, I do. Sorry. Sue me. And it's no secret. I also really enjoy David Arquette. Pause. He's one of my favorites. Yeah. And, All that. Uh, All morning. Pause warning. <laughs> I was flirting with the two game suspension there. That's my bad. But I like uh, Eight Legged Freaks. Uh, I, think, I think it's a fun movie. Well, I think I just had a stroke while I was talking. I think it's a fun movie. And when I put it on the poll a while ago, I expected it to win. I thought it would. And when it didn't, I was like, okay, I know I'll pick it sometime soon. I didn't know it was going to be this soon. I'm glad I got to pick it. So it's 2002's Eight Legged Freaks. Came out when I was, I think, a. See, it was either my freshman. Yeah, I guess my freshman year, maybe my sophomore year, but um, I remember watching it back then and cracking up at it. Watched it again, t you know, this week for the first time in years and uh, laughing even again after all this time. All right, I'll go next. To no one's surprise, I had not seen this movie until this week. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really know much about it, honestly. I've, like, seen maybe, like, the cover art, you know, like the VHS cover art or whatever in the like movie galleries of the world or, you know, on HBO max as I scroll past it, but I've never taken the time to watch it because I'm really not a huge horror comedy fan. Uh, I feel like it's kind of a tough one to do, right? Like something like little monsters, they focus more on comedy and just had some horror stuff going on. I thought they nailed it, but I think uh, this movie was fun too. I really enjoyed it. I had a good time with it. It was nice. uh, not, I, I text Dustin after I watched it. The first one was like, yeah, I thought that was fun. David Arquette is awesome. You know, he's he's charming as you would expect him to be in this one. He does a great job. Fun cast. Uh, I had a good time with it. I mean, fuck, man. It's giant spiders killing people in a little remote town. And there's conspiracy theories. Man, it, we're living in conspiracy theory world, man, right now. This is this mm -hmm. was awesome. I, I'm, cool. I just bought some Costco uh, aluminum foil. I'm about to make all kind of tinfoil hats. <laughs> All right, so this is only the second time I'd seen this movie. Saw it a long time ago. Like you mentioned, the cover art, Nico. I remember the VHS cover art for this bad boy. Now, I'm pretty sure they already had DVDs at the time, but 
yours truly was not rich, still not rich, by the way. Uh, so he was out there popping off the VHS five dollar rental for Movie Gallery. That's that's not cap at all. Um, anyway, look, this movie's fun as shit, man. It it's creature features aren't really my bag, but this is played for laughs and still done really well from a suspense standpoint. I think they toe the line really, really well. Uh, now, to me, the effects don't hold up for shit. However, that adds some charm to this movie, in my opinion. Sometimes the shitty effects, like, say, Scorpion King, for instance, the effects really tank the movie. But in this case, I think they do such a good job with, like, yeah, these spiders don't look super awesome, like they were maybe out of the movie Toy Story. But still, they're pretty, you know, scary looking in their own right. Now, I will fully admit, I'm not afraid of spiders per se, but I am not a fan of spiders. Uh, and I think spiders are underutilized in horror films. I feel like there could be more spider scary movies out there. Maybe that's just me, because fuck spiders. Uh, I know they serve their purpose, but I don't give a fuck. Fuck them and fuck them kids. Um, anyway, Jeez. so look, sorry, I'm off on a tangent. But I think David Arquette does a really good job. That's, that's, that's see, I can compliment David Arquette as well. As and I think, the ca- I think the cast around him is fun. You know, there's a goober cop, which is kind of funny considering David Arquette is normally a goober cop. So I think that's kind of a fun little play there. And last thing, Sheriff Samantha can call me anytime. Of the day. Thank you. I'm glad you said that. How crazy is it? Because I remember, the, you know, back in the day, watching this, and uh, just, I know she was like 17, 18 at the time, so I'm not being weird about this, but how crazy is it that you look at the cast of this movie, and you see Scarlett Johansson, but when you watch the movie, she's not the most attractive female in it, because by God, Sheriff Samantha Parker, woo, she's a looker. <laughs> Buddy, woo. But since you call, since you you know told her to call you, so Scarlett Johansson, I've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. Call me sometime. All right, guys, let's jump to the scene by scene. The film starts with title card and narration from Harlan. This is a story of monsters, creatures. I've seen them. Harlan is a good character. He laughs as we see he's doing a conspiracy radio show from his trailer. We're in Prosperity, Arizona as we get shots through town in the countryside. A truck driver swerves to miss a rabbit spilling toxic waste into the water. One week later, Mike rides over to Taft's exotic spider farm. Mike walks in calling for Josh as he looks for the spiders. Josh shows Mike the new crickets from the pond. They're like spider steroids. The two check out all the different spiders and Mike has to leave. Josh notices a spider is loose and it's on his back. It bites him and he bumps into all the aquariums, knocking them all out. Another week later, Chris is dropped off and walks inside asking for an engineering job. He's told they're not hiring. Aunt Gladys recognizes him and hugs him. Mike rides up to the pond and sees Officer Pete and his mom pulling the toxic waste barrel out. Sheriff Samantha spins her truck around and pulls over some kids on dirt bikes. Sheriff has Ashley get in the truck and writes Brett a ticket. Mike disconnects the phone line on Ashley so he can make a call to Josh, who is dead in the spider web. Big town meeting at the mall with the mayor. The citizens are pissed with him. Chris walks in saying those mines are full of methane gas and he's not selling the mine. Wade chases him out, saying to not make the town suffer because he wasn't there when his father died. Chris punches him and Sheriff handcuffs him, but lets him leave. Sheriff has a crush on Chris, we can tell. Pete is doing some home repairs as we see the cat chase after a spider into the drywall. They hand the cat some food, but suddenly we hear the cat screeching as it slammed into the wall repeatedly. The couple watches on in horror. Gladys tells Chris to prove he's changed and to tell Sam why he beat her husband up ten years ago. Pete calls Sam, telling her something ate his cat as we see Mike sneak out but his bike is handcuffed. Chris arrives to Sam's house with flowers. Sam tells Ashley she's worried about her and gives her a stun gun. Ashley insults her mom, but they make up. Chris and Sam talk now, and he apologizes for yesterday. He asks her to meet somewhere to catch up. He gives her the flowers awkwardly and walks back to his truck. Mike makes it to Josh's spider farm and sees all the destruction. He videos what he sees, then finds tracks outside that are five times their original size. He sees a spider in the distance and leaves. All right, Mike, that's opening set of scenes I got. What'd you think? Yeah, so, look, I like how this show opens up with a, like, modern version of the Art Bell radio show from the past, which if you don't know what that is, that's a old-time conspiracy talk show. I like this character. Like, I, I think he adds some good comedic elements. Big fan. Um, look, 
I, you know, we just kind of did a little mini reaction to talk to me. We talked about the kangaroo. I'm just saying all of this chaos started because a rabbit was in the middle of the road. No, nah, man, fuck that rabbit. He learned a hard lesson today. We're running his ass over. Rabbit stew on the way. That's all I'm saying. And I'm not cruel to animals. Just, you know, you kind of like, you kind of like Wake Forest football. Sometimes you're just going to get left behind no matter what. It's just the way it is. It doesn't matter how good you are. You're just going to get left behind. It'd be like that sometimes. Um, by the way, the toxic water looks like the lake in my hometown. So shout out to everybody back home. Little Lake Wells Lake. Don't swim. Don't, don't put your feet in there. That's where all the poo goes. Um, <laughs> this is kid actor Mike here. Scott Terra's second best movie. Because his first best movie that he's in is Dickie Roberts, former child star. Fucking hilarious film. It's Nucking Futs. Great. Shout out to Scott Terra there. He does a good job in this movie being the kid. Mike, look, I talked about it in my opening. Spiders are underutilized in horror, in my opinion. And this movie proves that even the small version of themselves really creeps me out. Like, I, I have an unsettling feeling when I look at a group of spiders. Kind of like I have the fear. I actually do have the phobia. Of like the cluster of holes gives me the heebie-jeebies. Same thing with the spiders. Like, ah, I don't know, I'm not scared of them, but it makes me have my skin crawl. But a, a spider crawling on me without me realizing it is one of my is one of my biggest fears. You see that happen with him, and now we have thirty on this man at the exact same time. Fucking wild to me. I'd rather just die. Just put a gun to my head. We're gonna end this shit now. I'd rather have that. Also, I do find it weird that this kid wants to go check out an older man's spider farm. I agree with the mom there. Stay the fuck away from that spider farm. Um, look, this movie has like a, has a few early awesome, like, like that, that early 2000s post grunge rock where it's not quite like Nirvana or whatever, but it's like that no bait, like, you know, the, the like filter and fuel and bands like that, where it's like that early 2000s like Nickelback shit. A couple awesome songs there. Uh, background character Riley Smith. He plays one of the dirt bike friends. Also played in the decom motocross around this time, which is a decom about dirt biking. You're fucking welcome. Shout out to my Disney Channel peeps. Um, it is really weird to see a young Scarlett Johansson here. Like, just because all the other movies we've seen her in since then, to see her in a movie like this is still kind of strange. It's like watching Leo DiCaprio in some of his earlier movies as well. Go ahead. I'll do you one better. Go back and watch Home Alone 3. Scarlett Johansson's in that. Buddy, I will it's, never it's... go back and watch Home Alone 3. Oh, get out of here. That movie's fun. <laughs> no, okay, sure, pal. It's uh, fun. Look, this version of David Arquette's character has the edge that I wish Dewey had. That's all I'm going to say. It's all that needs to be said. Uh, I'm, uh, I wanted to make sure I put it in my notes again that the sheriff can call me anytime. I really love the shot of the spider in the pantry going for food. It was lit right. Like, I know we're kind of in the middle of a horror comedy, but they do some of these shots really, really well of useful effect, like useful effect with the spider. Like, I think they do a great job shooting it, making it creepy, making the right kind of jump scare. Oh, sh the, the effects I really like are when this spider and cat are crawling up the wall and the prints start to come out. I think that's a really cool visual. I think the effects... We're done really well there. Uh, also, I, I need David Arquette to just keep the facial hair. I know he shaves it in this movie, spoiler alert, but he should have kept the goatee the whole movie, man. I think it's a good look for him. Um, but anyway, this this man, David Arquette, is basically Adam Sandler. Average-looking ass, pulls the hot girl at the end. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, not to shit on him. He's great. I'm sure he's a great guy, but let's be honest here. Gail, and now that, no. Unbelievable. Not buying it, even though he pulled Gale in real life. Not the point. Um, last thing. I love the sets of this movie. I love the way the town looks. I love the mines. I love all of it. I love the old houses. I think they look really, really good. And I would literally rather die than deal with a giant mega spider. Just put me out the pasture and shoot me. I don't want to deal with this shit. The town can save itself. Scared of spiders. Be a man. I'm not scared um. of spiders. They just get me... The they make my skin crawl. I'll crush one with the quickness, though. I don't give a fuck. Oh, brother. Um, anyway, you mentioned Harlan and what a great character he is, Nico. I agree. Shout out to Dougie Doug. I always think of either Cool Runnings or That Darn Cat when I see him. But he was fucking spitting oh, when he called out his listeners. Cat. Yes. So that's yes. a fun movie, him and Christine Ricci. Um, 
But he was fucking spit when he called out his listeners for still believing we landed on the moon. I'll tell you that much. But Thanks. anyway, when That's the spider cat. gets out and uh, bites Joshua, I have questions about that. Like, how did the top of that terrarium come open? And if it had been open that whole time, why did the spider just then get out? Like, I get it. We see later in the movie that the spiders are able to, you know, bust through glass and everything. But that's not what happened here. This <laughs> The ship was pulled back. It was, there was a gap. And the spider just crawled out. No one touched it. So that's a little sus. Um, Mike, unplugging the landline to get a sister off the phone. Talk about a dated reference. Yep. <laughs> These kids today don't know there's what the a fuck a landline is. But... <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a few of those. <laughs> so <laughs> funny. And it and also, like, uh, like, later when... They're like, does anyone have a cell phone? It's like one person had a cell phone in this entire town. That's a sign of the time. It's crazy. Uh, then I, I think the way they showed the spiders at Joshua's was well done. Or should I say how they didn't show them? Like it didn't reveal too much. Uh, less, uh, you know, They showed us enough to let us know that they've grown even more and they're getting really big. But it was uh, it was concealed nicely. Didn't, didn't give it away too much. Uh, it was also kind of weird like you mentioned mike it was kind of weird seeing david arquette in a movie where another guy is playing a dim-witted deputy that was kind of cool uh but the fight between zeke and the spider behind the drywall the zeke the cat and the spider behind the drywall that was pure comedy like the way the spider and the cat would crash into the drywall and make their impressions of their faces or their body and stuff that shit was ridiculous and i loved every second of it uh and then last thing i put on, on this set of scenes Miller Light and ice cream. That's a hell of a combination Pete's eating there. Like <laughs> nothing tells, you know, he's either depressed or stoned. There's no two ways about it. Maybe he was both, <laughs> but I think it was a very fun uh, opening set of scenes. There's no other way to describe really any of this movie other than fun. Yep. Chris picks Mike up and takes him into town. Mike tells Chris about the giant spiders living in the mine shaft. Leon sucks a bunch of <laughs> spiders out of a hose into his mouth. He's attacked and killed. Mike climbs into his room and is caught by his mom. He tells her the whole town is in danger and she blames the movies he's watching. Brett overhears Wade talking about the town storing toxic waste. Brett leaves and we see an ostrich snagged by a spider. Wade goes outside to see what's going on. More ostriches are swept away as Wade is confused with what's going on. Harlan is talking about all the pets being reported being missing. Chris goes to the barber shop for a shave. Brett is putting the moves on Ashley. She says she's not ready to lose her virginity. He keeps persisting, and she stun guns him in the sack, and he falls out of the truck. She drives off in it, and Brett sees the giant spiders on the hill. He tells everyone to get on their bikes and leave. The group is ambushed by the spiders, and the others drive off. The spiders are fast as fuck catching up to them. Brett kicks a spider midair, and the spiders hijack a semi-truck that explodes. Brett thinks he's safe, but more spiders are after him, and he makes it into the mines. Gladys' dog follows noises into the basement. She looks for him and finds a giant tunnel in her basement, finding his collar. Gladys is wrapped up by the spiders as Chris calls out for her. He finds a giant spider exoskeleton and flees immediately. He drives over to Samantha's house and yells out for Mike. He shows Mike the exoskeleton and he computes how big the spider is. Mike says Gladys might still be alive, just in a cocoon. Ashley tears up her picture of her and Brett as a spider crawls through her window. It attacks her and the others run in. Chris hits it with a chair and he's attacked now too in the web. Samantha kills them with the or Samantha kills the spider with a shotgun. All right, Mike, that's the next set of scenes I got. What do you think? Yeah, first of all, the uh, the insult of obese cactus. I'm stealing that. It's fucking awesome. I'm gonna start calling other people that that are being pricks. I won't call out anybody, but when someone's being a prick, I'm gonna start calling them an obese cactus. Anyway, um, look, here we are again. Spiders. In unison, crawling out of this man's mouth. It gave me the creepy crawlies. I can't stand it. It's, nope, don't like that. That's a Michael Scott meme right there. Uh, look, I had parents that were, were pretty loose with rules, but even they wanted to know where the fuck I was going. This guy doesn't give two shits about his stepson. Uh, so yeah, I, 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 I wish they had maybe dive, like dove in a little more to some of the character development. Small nitpick. This movie's about the fun. Um, look, I will say I hope they eat all this man's ostriches. And let me fucking tell you why. Because ostriches are fucking useless. They don't fly. They smell. They spit at people. And all they do is slightly run faster than other birds. 
They oh, are fucking slightly. useless. Hey, what dude wears my car? You'll learn all you need to know about ostriches. Buddy, I used to, back when we lost cable for a month, I watched Dude Wears My Car in America Pie 2 till the fucking VCR broke, buddy. I know <laughs> Dude Wears My Car, okay? No end then. Anyway. Did, um, did, did, well, you did say that Andy Dick's your favorite actor, so that makes sense. Fuck off. Anyway. <laughs> Again, I just want to say for a movie that's kind of over the top and absurd in nature, comical in a sense, they do a good job with the suspenseful scenes, man. This thing on the quote-unquote ostrich farm, I really like when it gets dark and there's spiders crawling around and the creepy noises. I think they do a tremendous job shooting that. Uh, This man got tasered in the fucking balls. (laughs) I need you to know I felt it. Now, he deserved it. I, I want to be very clear. We don't just go groping away with Carl Johansson. We we don't do that. That is called assault, brother. And you deserve to get tased in the balls. But it did catch me off guard. And I laughed for about five minutes. I had to rewind because I missed some. Because <laughs> it was fucking hilarious. He pissed himself like goddamn Vince McMahon with the stunt, you know, with the, you know, bang 316. That's how he looked. Um, look, that was a great scene. I thought it was hilarious. And it, it, it flipped. Scarlett Johansson's character so quick where I thought she was going to be this like stereotypical antagonistic older sister when she's really not. She's just kind of your everyday normal teenager. I think that kind of wants to defend herself against creeps. So I appreciated that character development. Um, Look, CGI is bad, which I've already mentioned. These giant spiders attacking these dirt bike assholes is a great scene. Like it, it looks so fucking cool out in the desert. These giant fucking spiders attacking everybody. My biggest complaint of the whole movie is the lack of visual kills from the spiders themselves. When the spiders get killed, I think it looks fucking sick. But the spiders killing, I wish we had seen a little bit more of it, a little bit more of the gore that comes with that. Small nitpick maybe, but I don't know. Like I I, I wish we had just seen some cooler kills is all. These spiders are goddamn indestructible. Nobody want, uh, these spiders never go away hard unless you just shoot them and blow them up. They're like a goddamn AEW match that never fucking ends. All these false finishes. <laughs> just nobody wants to sell anything. Oh, sorry. Oh, my bad. Wrong tangent. Um, I'm not going to lie. Who the fuck let Gladys' old, old ass down in the mines? Well, Gladys needs to have supervision 24 7. She can't be off on her own doing shit. Look, all I'm saying, Gladys went down into the mines. It's just David Arquette. Failing to protect people of the town again. I've seen this movie before. He's supposed to protect the town. He doesn't do a great job. People die. Look at that. It's weird. Almost like David Arquette is, has a problem there. Anyway, um, last thing. She was really calm, Scarlett Johansson, for a s- giant fucking spider coming in her window in the bedroom. She sees it, lays eyes on it, and doesn't flip out. I mean, maybe she's braver than I. I don't know. But... I'm just saying I would have probably at least shit myself. At least. I don't know if she did, but I would have at least probably shit my pants, probably screamed like a little bitch for sure. But luckily, Sheriff Samantha is a total badass, saves the fucking day. Uh, Call me sometime. (laughs) So uh, five spiders crawling out of Leon's mouth. Yuck. That's nightmare fuel even for someone like me who's not afraid of spiders. That's insane. Also, Mike, uh, I don't know how you'll feel about this. I think I told you the story, though. There was a uh, black widow in my basement one time, and I, instead of killing it, I picked it up by the leg and transported it outside. So I don't mind that. Okay, okay. But, they don't uh, deserve to die. They just give me the creepy crawlies. Yes, they deserve to die, and I hope they burn in hell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> shout to Sam Jackson. Uh, the size of the spider there in that mine was insane. Holy shit. So I, I love how ridiculous it is at this point. And then it was funny when Brett told Wade that he was off to get wasted, have an orgy, steal a car, <laughs> just saying whatever to make to prove that he wasn't listening. But the the way that it advanced and progressed was great. Get wasted, have an orgy, steal a car, and then the the ostrich just gets snatched. That's a typical Tuesday night I, for you, buddy. Uh, yeah, Nico. Um, the, the emails <laughs> I, getting, I never specified. <laughs> The emu, the emus, the ostriches getting snatched was hilarious, and I thought it was really well done. Um, I love how the fe- feathers went flying, but also like how 
you could tell they were getting snatched up and drug underneath the ground, but they didn't show us what it was. I think that scene, those spiders reminded me a lot of uh, Tremors. Like, we know something's grabbing and snatching them underneath. And, like, this movie honestly reminds me a lot of Tremors in general. Like, they're both ridiculous, outrageous, funny movies. So maybe that's why yep. I like it so much. Uh, then this line. Hey, Gladys, how can you still listen to this wacko? I think he's very informative. Boy, if that's not a great quote about the state of 2023, I don't know what it is. Like, Nico, you mentioned how everyone's a conspiracy theorist these days. Lunatics have more of a voice than ever. And we can just peddle whatever message we want, and there's going to be a sizable group that agrees. So love the, the similarities between Harlan and current society. Uh, and then, yeah, Taze and Brett in the balls. That was awesome. He'll never forget for the rest of his life that no does, in fact, mean no. Uh, we get a great kill here with the, the spider jumping off the roof and attacking Brett's bro as he's trying to warn him. Because it's like... Put yourself in that dude's face or that dude's shoes. It's like, yeah, ha, sure, giant spiders are coming. What are you talking about, dude? And then one just attacks your face and kills you. So I, I love that, the way it was shot. It's probably the most gruesome and violent and vivid death that we get in the movie, too. So there's a spoiler. Uh, we get a great looking explosion when the truck hits the telephone pole. And another reference where kids today just wouldn't get. He hit that pole and the phone lines are down. <laughs> what does that mean? So that was funny. It's not the first. Uh, hey, that's not the first time a poll has ever won in our show here. Oh, sorry, my bad. Hey yo, telephone uh, poll, poor dog hey, got hey, snatched uh, up. I'm just saying <laughs> that poor dog gets snatched up in the basement. Didn't like that. You know that's R.I.P. Um, last thing I have is when when Chris took the large spider leg to Mike. I love how he quoted his mom from earlier when she was talking about how it's his uh, imagination or his. Whatever I can't remember the exact quote that she used, but he when she finally said, "What is that thing?" He just threw her words right back at her. So I thought that was great. But yeah, another fun, ridiculous set of scenes. Sam radios for Pete to get every weapon and bring them to her house. Brett is cruising around the mines, finding Leon's dead body, and he sees another person killed by a spider. Leroy is attacked from behind by a spider, and Bob at the barber shop is cocooned to the ceiling. Pete is chased by spiders through town. Sam, Chris, Ashley, and Mike run the Pete's patrol car, shooting spiders as they're chased. They make it to Harlan's to make an emergency broadcast to town. Sam tells everyone the town is being overran by giant spiders and arm yourself immediately. Mike radios to Sam, saying there's a giant tarantula heading to her. Sam radios for everyone to meet at Prosperity Mall as a tarantula attacks the trailer, flipping it over. The three exit and make it to Pete's patrol car. The people at the diner now see the town being overran by the spiders. People are running, driving as fast as they can. Chris jokes as spiders are from Mars as they see the chaos in town. Sam radios to town to get to the mall fast as possible. Wade goes to leave the mall until he sees a fleet of cars arriving. If you build it, they will come. Sam tells Chris to get everyone inside and close the door. Wade sees the spider attacks now and runs inside. Chris gets the key from the janitor and shuts the door. Sam makes it in the mall just as the door closes. Everyone gathers up asking what's going on. Mike tells Sam that everyone has to be quiet. Mike tells everyone that spiders are attracted to vibrations and noise. Wade tosses his cell phone to Chris, and Harlan aids him as they head to the antenna on the ceiling. Everyone goes through the mall to get a weapon. Harlan and Chris make it to the roof as Chris and Harlan are given perfume to confuse the spiders. The giant tarantula begins to attack the front door. Wade sneaks out the back. Chris climbs a tower as Wade locks the others in. Spiders begin to climb on the roof as Chris calls 911. The dispatcher doesn't believe him, obviously, and laughs at him. Sam has Norman take the kids and injured people to the storage room. The spiders break through the door and they open fire. They're quickly outnumbered and overwhelmed. Civilians are picked off one by one by the spiders. Pete takes off running as the others realize Wade locked them in from the other side. Harlan jumps off the tower to distract the spiders. He then jumps off the roof into the bushes. Pete and Harlan run away as Chris uses his jacket to zip line down an air duct. In the next set of scenes in the ending, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, so again, here I wish they'd sh I wish they would show some of these gr grills, Jesus, some of these kills a little more graphically. Like I, you know, I know we're in a horror comedy, and that's not really the main focus, but I think it would make it an even cooler movie to see some of these kills just a little bit more violent, a little bit, uh, even if they're played for laughs and they're over the top. I wish that we could, you know, just see it a little more. 
in this scene, I'm reminded how bad the CGI is, but any, you know, the spiders popping up from behind this old man still get me. Like, I think they're used really effectively if you can kind of remove the fact that they look, like I said, like a, a scene out of Toy Story. If you can remove that, I think they use it really effectively. Again, spider popping up from behind a chair to kill this old man I thought was fucking done really well. Really effective. Creeped me out. I So the spiders being killed look cooler than the spiders doing the killing, though. As they explode and all this like toxic ooze comes out, I think it looks really effective. Um, also, no sheriff. Well, that's not true. Grady Judd exists from where I'm from. But most sheriffs today would be under a lot of flack if they told their whole town to arm themselves with weapons. Would not go over very well. Uh, but that's just neither here nor there. Um, I think the scenes where the spiders are running around town on just everyday buildings are really fucking fun and cool. Could you imagine looking out your window? You don't even know what's going on. You haven't been paying attention. Maybe you took a nap. And while you were taking a nap, all of a sudden you look out the window and there's giant fucking spiders running around. That's a big nope for me. Digging a tunnel underground, putting the couch over. Hopefully they don't find me. I'll be real fucking quiet. So uh, that would, honestly, I just think those scenes are f- fucking fun. Uh, normally, I'm a man fuck them kids guy, but this kid is smart. So I'd probably listen to this kid when he speaks about the spiders. Um, how this movie is a fortune teller. It's way ahead of its time because she told everybody to meet at the mall, which she told them to meet there because it was fucking dead and, and, and quiet and silent inside because no one's going to the fucking mall, which is very weird and telling because I work in a mall and guess what? Nobody goes to the fucking mall ever. So great messaging there. I disagree. I maybe, maybe it was closed, that but let me, buddy, you live in a much more populated area than I do. The mall is dead as shit around here, pal. And the, and the mall is dead as shit where I'm from in Florida, too. So sign of the times, at, or you know, a little bit ahead of the times, I should say. She told everybody to meet there because she knew nobody was going to fucking be at the mall, man. Um, so it was a good safe space for sure. I'll tell you right now, you're not sending me to the roof. I'm not, I'm not helping save all you people. I'm grabbing a weapon, and I'm hoping for the best. I'm not going up there to do that. Can't make me. Uh, Jason Mask cameo, by the way. Well, Friday the 13th mask here in the back as they get ready. I know it's a hockey mask, but no, that, 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 that was intentionally like Jason for sure. One of my favorite well shot scenes in the film comes as the door, you know, the g- g- garage door, the rising door is opened by the one spider and it kind of backs out. And then there's a brief pause, silence, and then all the spiders come rushing in. Fucking brilliant. I loved it. Super fun, super well done. Love that scene the way it was shot. I look this uh, the the scenes in the mall are good, but I do feel they're a little bit drawn out just a smidge uh, here towards that part. Um, you know, last thing, <laughs> just many many spiders now making my skin crawl, creeping me the fuck out. So this movie's d- 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 you know at least on me very effective. Also, if you ever pay attention to if you ever pay attention to South Park, zip lining is for losers. Go ahead. <laughs> that was the worst day of their lives on South Park. Uh, Nico, I do want to ask you since you you threw in that they said the quote, "If you build it, it will come." You you know what movie that's from? God, yes, but I can't think of it. What is it? I can't okay. think of it. Field, Field of Dreams. Have oh, you seen no, it? I guess I'm wrong. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, I've heard that quote somewhere else, that I guess. Flips, yeah, he heard it because it was a play off of the movie. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the spider that flips Harlan's trailer here was insane. Holy, like, not only is it huge, but it also looks a little ridiculous. But I definitely appreciate the attention to detail and making each species of spider like anatomically correct. Like they looked accurate. It's just the effects didn't really hold up. Um, this set of scenes, I'll be honest with you. I love the action, the pacing in the set of scenes. It was very easy for me though, to get lost in the movie here and forget that I was supposed to be taking notes. So um, I didn't, I don't have a lot on this set of scenes, but I will say that I too, Mike, like you said, this is where I noticed that the, the effects weren't that great, or at least they don't hold up 21 years later. 
But, you know, you can forgive it in a movie like this because it's supposed to be fun. If this was a movie like this was a very serious movie about large spiders, like, oh, this looks like shit. But it doesn't. Kind of like uh, uh, Phantoms. Like uh, some of the effects in Phantoms, like that movie wasn't supposed to be as ridiculous and fun as this one. So we shit on the effects. Not going to do that here. Um, when Sam says for everybody to get ready, like I, I love the guy wearing the hockey mask and welding the chainsaw. Like, yeah, like you said, Mike, that's very Jason Voorhees-esque. I love that. And then when all the spiders get inside the mall, I thought of something. You can't tell me this wouldn't have been a fun-ass idea for a video game. Like an eight-legged freaks video game, they they pissed away an idea right there because that, that would have sold. <laughs> you could do endless count, you know, levels and stuff. That would have been fun. Uh, and then the last thing that I put, Harlan jumping off the roof like that was funny as hell. Like, I laugh, you see him jump, and then you hear him thud on the ground. But at the same time, I have a hard time believing he just popped right back up. That's a hell of a fall. And he just popped up like he wasn't hurt, nothing. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, just going to say it once again, another fun set of scenes. Got that dog in him. All right, here's the ending. Wade finds Brett in the mines, and Wade is pulled away by a spider. Brett drives away again. Sam helps Chris get out the air duct. Brett uses a forklift to knock the door Wade locked over. They kill the spiders flooding in, and Sam uses the lift to barricade the other door. Chris leads them into the mines now. Chris tells them of the methane gas and to be careful. Norman is attacked and drug away in front of everyone. They walk in the orb den, and Wade's body falls in front of them. The spiders move the lift and flood the mines. Chris tells Sam to lead everyone out, and he asks for Brett's bike. Sam knows all of Chris's confession, and they kiss. Chris looks for Gladys now. He finds her still alive. The others make it out and go to turn on the generator. Chris sprays perfume on the spider, confusing it, and he and Gladys take off on the dirt bike. The generator has no fuel as Chris puts the matches into the broken light fixture. Ashley gives Sam the stun gun to create an electric surge, igniting the matches and methane gas. Fire fills the tunnels, killing the spiders, as Chris and Gladys make it out of the tunnels just in time. The Prosperity Mall explodes as Wade Prey's insurance comes through for him. A cavalry of emergency help arrives, as Harlan tells them they listened to his broadcast. Chris said everyone else in the cocoons were dead, as Sam asked him if he's glad he came home. Back to Harlan as he broadcasts about the time his town was attacked. He says they never got the, that probe near him, and Chris getting everyone back to work in the gold mines is another story, as we zoom in on his gold teeth and him laughing. All right, Mike, what do you think about the ending? Yeah, so the last few weeks I feel like we've had some dud endings, or... We had, you know, we had the twist ending that I didn't think really hit all these years later. You know, we, we've had some what I would consider just kind of flat endings. This is not one of those times. I felt like this movie wrapped up exactly how it should have wrapped up. Uh, you know, it's kind of a fun movie, so I'm expecting a happy ending. And we get that. At least I think so. Uh, again, I just love the way the spiders look when they explode. And there's a lot of that here. So I think it holds up really well. Uh Sheriff grabs a forklift, and I know my brother Nico is forklift certified, so he knows any woman that can drive a forklift is okay with me. Let's go. Took control of that motherfucker. Put it in front of the door. Smart thinking, Sheriff. Love it. Um, I wish we had more of the spooky scenes, you know, more of the more tense scenes down in the mines. Like, I feel like that's such a good setting, a little bit of a missed opportunity there. I wish they had used that as a backdrop for some of these spider scenes a little bit more. But we get enough here, so I guess it's just, again, another little nitpick. But I do think it's the best setting because not only are they giant spiders, now we're claustrophobic. You know, it would be like, and I know some people on the show don't like the movie, so I'm just using it as an example. But it would be like spiders with the descent. Like, could you imagine? Not only are they down there with those fucking things, but now there's giant spiders. Like, again, just so ridiculous to say out loud, but I think it would have worked in this movie to have it a little more. But anyway cool shot of them walking down these tunnels or there's all kinds of webs on the wall. I think those are really cool visuals. Looks really cool. Um, a lot of cool visuals in this movie, by the way, bad jump scare with, you know, my man falling off the ceiling, still alive. Oh, that was a pretty bad jump scare. But again, look, I know he wants to go back for Gladys, but buddy, Gladys has had a good run. Let's get out of this. Let's get out of the mines. Come on now. Nah, I'm just saying Gladys was getting on up there. That's that's all I'm gonna say. But here we are. He's confess. He wants to confess his love to Sh Sheriff Samantha, but she stops him in his tracks, does the dirty work for him. That's the kind of initiative I'm talking about, ladies. 
That is called progress. Grabbed it, took it, and grabbed it and took it by the horns and said, no, I'm going to say exactly what you've been wanting to say. You've just been too scared to say it. So she's a badass. Like I said, promise some time. Um, finding gold cracked me the fuck up. Come on now. <laughs> what, what are, that's so ridiculous. What are the chances of them finding this gold they've been looking for forever? Uh, I think that's pretty fucking hilarious. Uh, this movie has an Adam Sandler ass ending though. Just want to point that out. Cause again, kind of average looking guy gets a really hot girl at the end who's probably out of his league in a lot of ways, but that's okay. It's not a David Arquette knock, just kind of the way it goes. Uh, again though, a lot of fun all the way through. So much fun to go back and revisit it. It's been a really long time and I'm glad that we did, man. Yeah. Um, I laugh every time. When Sam asks Chris, what are you doing up there? And he goes, just chilling when he's in the air vent. (laughs) Just chilling. Help me get out of here. Like that shit was so funny. Uh, and then when they're in the mine and going through the huge nest of webs, that's a hell of a jump scare when Wade drops down from the ceiling. So that, that one, that one, that don't get you if you ain't, ain't ready for it. I do love when Chris went to Sam, like you said, and he went to tell Sam, what he wanted to tell her all movie long, and she knew exactly what he was going to say, and he got to kiss the girl. at a boy. Also, hilarious when she walked off, and he goes, well, that was easy. Like, <laughs> fucking great <laughs> delivery there. Um, <laughs> the female in this mind, that was a big bitch. And, of course, perfume shoot it away. Like, that is so ridiculously fitting for this ridiculous movie. Like, I love that shit. Just a couple sprays of the perfumes and scares it off. Uh, I get another great looking explosion too. Like, I think this is a really fun ending to a fun movie. Absolutely. All right, guys, I'm in our social media. I'm going to do Twitter and Facebook. Dustin's going to do Instagram. All right, let's start with Twitter. Mookie, this movie is perfect. Five out of five, 10 out of 10, however you rate it. It's a perfect film. Love this movie. Love that it still holds up and love any movie with David Arquette. Can't go wrong. I wasn't sure if it would hold up going into it. But it does. Love the noises the spiders make, too. Hell yeah, brother. I'm sure Dustin loves hearing that. Yeah. Go dogs, Randy Smith. This is just fun. This is just a fun movie to turn off your brain and enjoy. Go dogs, brother. Until FSU takes back over. Anywho, our Facebook now, Joe Swinford, big fan of the show. LOL, me and my sister love this movie. Maybe David Arquette and Scarlett Johansson's best acting to date with a laughing emoji. Hey, easy now. Easy now. I thought David well, was good in Scream 5. Oh, he, David Arquette just has all hits, no misses. Um, Ooh, let's, uh, come on, buddy. How Ready to Rumble is a classic movie. And I, I didn't, second I of didn't all, Scarjo, Scarjo has no, no misses either. But oh, I'll yeah. say her best acting job was in the Justin Timberlake music video, What Goes Around Comes Around. She was fantastic in that video. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dustin's burner account, Dex Cole said, Jesus. "Such a good B movie. It's silly and entertaining, and one of his one of the first movies I remember watching on Cinemax when we finally got digital cable as a kid." Hell yeah, brother! All right, Dustin, you ready for Instagram? Yeah, let me take a deep breath here. <laughs> the Black Han Solo says, "Them fucking radioactive spiders will get you every time." This film is definitely a very amazing nod to the drive-in sci-fi radioactive monster film. Uh, genre from the mid 50s and 60s following the giant tarzi of the 1954s sorry if the, i'm not sure if i read that right uh them this film gives you as much scientific explanation as a, Sp- a spider-man comic and i love it it even has a hint of joe dante's gremlins with some of the campiness of the web slinging fucks yelling and yeehawing in a cartoonist fashion of course the cgi isn't great but to me that adds to its dry vanish luster if they ever remade it, the only thing I would tweak is the CGI on the arachnids. I mean, making it a little more serious might make it a little bit more scary, but spiders are already creepy AF, and there are a few scenes that are terrifying, in my opinion, especially if you're afraid of spiders, like Mike. He didn't put that part. I added it. Um, the film is no arachnophobia, but it's definitely in my top three or five. Speaking of web-slinging menaces, do you guys remember the TV spot for this film when it came out? The commercial would start like a Spider-Man movie spot, and then a Spider-Man, quote, Spider-Man, 
would get tackled by a giant spider. Kudos to their marketing team because Spider-Man was released in May of the same year. Also, shout out to the young Black Widow, ScarJo, who in my head, canon, uh, got her moniker after surviving this event and later joined the Avengers. I like that. That's that's great. I know these two guys don't appreciate a good Marvel movie like I do, Black on Solo, but that's great. Um, great Marvel. Anyways, I can't wait to hear you guys' thoughts on Eight Legged Freaks in my oh in my David Arquette voice. I can't recreate that. Eight Legged Freaks. He yells it. Flip, flip, and stay gory, fellas. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Thanks, buddy. Uh, optional thirteenth ghost says just rewatch this in preparation for the episode. My main criticism was how poorly the digital effects aged. It honestly became really distracting and made it hard for me to enjoy the film. That's fair. They weren't great. Uh, Jay Hambrick 88 says this movie is so freaking dope. I watched it all the time growing up. David Arquette is our hero. My man. It's my fucking spitting. Uh, Kevin Scanlon, teammate at Kevin Scanlon says, I hate spiders, but I actually enjoy this movie because of how over the top ridiculous it is. This is my nightmare, though. If it, anything like this ever happened in real life, I'm out. I think you and Mike could be on the first bus out of town together, pal. <laughs> Last nice. comment we got was Matt Strickland uh, says, thoroughly enjoyed and loved when this one came out. Uh, we went into it with the mindset it's a horror comedy and expected some ridiculousness, which there was, so we suspended disbelief and just had a good watch. Love the cast on here as well. Give it up for the GOAT, David Arquette, my man. And also Deadwood alum GOAT, Leon Rippey, a.k.a. the asshole mayor, to name a few. Keeping my ears on guard duty for this one, fellas. Appreciate the comments, everyone. Heck yeah. Lots of comments. So many of them I had to have uh, my brother Dustin take over Instagram for me just because that's a lot of reading, man. It was a lot of reading. Imagine <laughs> Floyd Mayweather trying to read the Black Han solos. He would have died. <laughs> I'll give you $750,000. Yeah, I was about to say, fuck reading one page of a Harry Potter movie or a Harry Potter book. 50 Cent. Get Floyd to read that. Yeah, one black on solo comment. <laughs> All right, let's get back off that tangent. Uh, Dustin, I don't have any fun facts. You got any fun facts you want to share? I got a couple here. Uh, the title of this movie did not come from the script, the director, or the studio. In the scene where David Arquette's climbing the clock tower, or the clock, the clock tower, this isn't fucking Back to the Future, when he's climbing the tower on the roof, David Arquette improvised the phrase eight legged freaks, and that became the title. The original title was Iraq Attack, which was uttered earlier in the movie when Joseph or Jonathan, whatever his name was, yeah. was telling Mike in, in his little uh, shop of horrors there. He yeah. said it's an Iraq attack. Uh, anyway, pre-production started seven months before shooting was due to commence. This was mainly to give the visual effects crews time to render the spiders as quickly and as accurately as possible. Typical pre-production is three to four months. So the fact that they gave him seven months on this, that shows how closely uh, or how accurate they wanted to get the spiders looking. It just the effects didn't hold up. That's fine. And the last one that I have is a sequel was originally announced by producer David uh, or Dean Devlin back in 2003. It would have had Ellery LKM El- 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 returning to direct and David Arquette reprising his role as Chris McCormick. But nothing more was ever said about it. And the sequel got scrapped for unknown reasons. So... I'd like to find out what happened. I would. I always bitch about sequels and making remaking sequels and requels and all this shit years and years after the fact. But here we are, twenty one years later. I will take a sequel to this movie. It's fun. Go I ahead. would take a sequel. I would take a sequel now, especially because it'd be really fun to just revisit it with everybody being older. I think it'd be hilarious. I don't. I don't know if you could get Scarlett Johansson to sign on for that, but I think it'd be fun as shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, okay. you ain't getting Scarlet back for this one. <laughs> hey, brother, Netflix uh, overpays people all the time. You never know. Um, although she seems to be ha- – she- isn't she in a lawsuit with Disney right now? That Do you know, know she's married to Colin Jost? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's – that's I learned that yesterday. It blew that's my mind. He's that's funny. Yeah, I, I he's, get it. I get it. He's, he's the yeah, best. Yeah, so this uh, movie had a budget of $30 million – and sadly, only grossed $17 million at the box office. However, made a shit ton, couldn't get the exact number, for VHS and DVD rentals. This movie made way more money than it had any right to. Well, maybe. And the fact that once it was re- released on home video, it had a very vi- very cool visual box art. And that 
leap the movie forward into cult classic status. This is a movie people talk about quite a bit with David Arquette. He's associated with it very much. So, again, the theatrical run, eh, but made a lot of its money back and then some on the home movie run. And that's why it's still, you know, it's still around, still talked about. <laughs> I also saw that of that $30 million budget, a third of it went to special uh, special effects alone. Uh, well, <laughs> that's I want to put half. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to comment on the uh, VHS cover art. David Arquette was doing the YouTube thumbnail face way before. Like he set the trend for it. Like that. That's the YouTube face now Absolutely. for every thumbnail. Absolutely. I'm about, I'm about sick of it to be honest. But David Arquette walked so everyone else could run uh, goat. goat things, right, Dustin? You All right, sure? let's jump into our favorite kill, least favorite kill in the rating. Dustin, this is your week. You want to kick us off? Yeah, I'll go ahead and go first. Uh, favorite kill to me was the bro who was laughing at Brett's warning, and the spider jumped off the roof and onto him. It's probably our most graphic kill, so I had to go with that one. Least favorite kill, I guess I'll go with any of the people who died in the mine that we didn't see even get wrapped up in the spider cocoon. We just saw there's a lot of people in there, and they all apparently died. So that was kind of easy. Also, the dog didn't deserve to die. Uh, rating. Listen, this is the dumbest kind of fun, and I think that's the best compliment that you could give a movie like this. Like, it's so fun, but it's so dumb. A mo- it's a movie that's meant to be taken lightheartedly. It doesn't pretend to be more than that. That being said, it's still not a great movie by any stretch of me- imagination, but it's fun. It's rewatchable a lot, so uh, I gave it a 7. All right, I'll go next. Favorite kill? I'm going to go with the kill where... Brett sees the guy in the mines where he gets like stabbed in the chest by the spider's leg or whatever. And you see like the blood pop out of his chest. I'm going to go with that kill just because it's bloody. Uh, the runner up for me would be the one in town where the spider rips the guy's car door off and just rips him out of the car. I just like the uh, spider's persistency. I like that. Least favorite kill. I got to agree with you, Dustin. I mean, there's so many of them you can pick where the spider just drug somebody off the screen. And they died off screen. So yeah. pick one of them. Rating. I agree with you, Dustin. I gave it a seven as well, but the movie's fun. Like it's a good time. Like you don't have to. Sometimes you don't need you don't need to watch a Midsommar or a Hereditary or Get Out. You know something you got to think about a lot or dive into. You don't have to watch The Shining. You can just turn on something like Tremors. I agree with you. I, I compare this movie to Tremors a lot. It's just something super ridiculous, but you have a good time with it. David Arquette gave. This was one of my favorite performances of his. I really enjoyed his character. I thought he did a great job. And I didn't say anything, but I agree with Mike. Like I'm not like deathly afraid of spiders, but giant spiders that run fast as fuck and chase after me, that's hor that's horrifying. That's a nightmare. That's a nightmare situation. So yeah, I gave the movie a seven. I, I had a good time with it and I'll definitely watch it again in the future. All right. I will uh read Brother Brian's next. Let me get my Brian voice on. <clears throat> Never mind. This is gonna do it normal. Unlike most, it seems, I don't have nostalgia for this film. I'd never seen it until this review. Fun fact, the dude who plays Johnny, question mark, the spider dude, Tom Noonan, used to scare my ass as a kid when he played the Ripper on Last Action Hero. Great shout out, Brian. Good movie there. Love it. Uh, tell you what, the guy needs to spend less time worrying about killing Jack Slater and worry more about, worry more about putting the lid on your fucking spider cages, and none of this happens. <laughs> Yeah, this plot is predictable, and yeah, the CG is that typical early 2000s cheese at times, but this movie is just fun as hell. Like Tremors, hey, he said it too. Like Tremors, it doesn't take itself too seriously, and at that time, at times, it's laugh out loud funny. My favorite line is in the movie was, quote, I don't want to lose my virginity in the front seat of a truck. And he says, quote, I have a blanket for the back. Fucking classic. I don't know, but I hope Scarlett Johansson has more love for this one than Jennifer Aniston has for Leprechaun. I do wish it had gone full rated R instead of PG-13. I feel like it could have been even better. It's fun as hell. I give it a 7.5. Well, in the words of Ty Schmidt impersonating Lou Holtz, well, well, well. (laughs) Look at here. It's Michael Settle with the highest score. Let's talk about it, baby. My favorite kill is all the spiders because it looks the fucking coolest because like Brian just mentioned, we got a PG-13 situation here, so I didn't get his cool kill from the spiders. And my least favorite kill is all the ones we didn't get to actually fucking see. So that's a lot of them. But I think the spiders exploding really hold up and look pretty cool. Look, man, I had a blast with this movie. No downtime to me. I don't feel the runtime except a little bit in the mall. So 
No big complaints there. I think David Arquette is great. Supporting cast is great. I, I like the idea for the film. Even if this movie were taken more seriously, I would still like it. But because it's kind of played for last, just given the fact that gigantic spiders, you said that out loud, uh, that's fucking ridiculous on its face. Then you turn it into a movie that I think really holds up just for the fun that it is. And like Nico mentioned, you don't always have to watch some deep critical think piece to get enjoyment out of a film. I like those. I'm a big fan of those when they're not nine hours long. I'm a big fan of epic dramas. I'm a big fan of historical dramas, all that good stuff. But sometimes I just want to throw on eight legged freaks and have a fucking blast. And I did that. So with yours truly being the highest score, I gave eight legged freaks a fucking eight. Okay. So that gives us a composite score of 7.375. IMDb, only 59,000 people have rated it, and they gave it a 5.5. That's ah, just, fuck those man, people. What do they know? Low. They don't know shit. They don't know anything, pal. Tragic. Any final thoughts, guys? Before we jump into I'll shout out the blood donors and announce our next two months theme. Good pick, Dustin. Thanks, man. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that The Hunt beat that one out, honestly. But, hey, it worked out. Yeah. I enjoyed The Hunt for what it was. All right, let's shout out our blood donors. Camper level reoccurring, Clayton J, Nina, Michelle Mirza, Andrew Ferguson, the Horror Movie Crew Podcast, Alex Seligson, Eric Doolittle, Sean Irwin, Brian Samick, Trisha, and Kelsey Miller. Our camp counselor reoccurring are Dennis Kennedy, Edwin Hernandez-Gunn, Joe Swinford, Jennifer Davis from a Too Close to Home Pod, Kyla Denise, all the way from Australia, Adrian Aiello, Karen, Matt Strickland, Gail Koontz, and my guy with the best Instagram Username of all time, optional 13th ghost. Really appreciate y'all's financial contributions. It means a lot to us. Times are super tough right now. Absolutely. Everything is expensive. So we really appreciate the fact that you help help us pay the bills around here. You it means help a lot. me buy aluminum foil. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Rumor has it, aluminum foil is expensive. That's, that's what I heard. It is, man. It is. That's, that Reynolds, whew, he's proud of this shit. Not a dollar tree. Oh, that's my crazy to me. <laughs> of all the things not we can complain about the Dustin. The shit. Of all the things we could complain about the price of, aluminum foil is not high on my list. <laughs> I'll complain about gas. That's about it, though. Everything else, man, happens. All right. Let's announce what our next two uh, months' themes are going to be. The past few years since we started this podcast, we've always done a 31 on 31 in October. Uh, all of us picked what movies we want to review, so I'll go ahead and announce those now. Dustin chose Children of the Corn. Brother Brian chose Underworld and The Purge. Brother Mike picked the Fear Street trilogy and the I Know You Did Last Summer trilogy. And I picked five home invasion movies, the two Don't Breathe movies, the two The Strangers movies, and last week's pick, You're Next. Uh, really excited to rank all those movies. Uh, it's a big show, but well, well, it's a big show. It's a good time. <laughs> uh, but the next two months, we're going to be reviewing films from those 31 we're already watching them for that show, so we figured we might as well knock out some reviews, not doing double the work, basically, because, honestly, it is kind of easy to get, not necessarily burnt out, but overwhelmed doing film reviews and having to watch 31 movies to rank. So for next sure. week is Brother Brian's pick. We're going to be doing Underworld 2. I can't think of the exact name, but it's the second Underworld movie. So, yeah, that's what we're going to be kicking it off with next week. Super excited. Those poor children of the corn films. They don't Oof. have a fucking chance. <laughs> yeah, 21 through 31, coming soon. To you. <laughs> <laughs> to you. Yeah. Great All right, guys. Uh, I had a good time with Subgenre Month. I thought it was kind of fun. Uh, done some really good reviews. I had a good time. Uh, yeah. Any final thoughts before we just get out of here? All right. Mm-hmm. Just want to appreciate We just want to say thank you to all the fans. We really appreciate you listening. And uh, y'all have a good one. Just want to remind everybody. Oh.